Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on The Laws of Light, we're gonna move from the ball cube and cylinder to subject matter. Objects that we're gonna photograph, but they all relate to a ball cube and a cylinder. So let's see exactly how they relate, how it allows us to know how to light for a subject that is not a ball cube and a cylinder, but is just a toaster or a box, a cereal box or something that we're gonna photograph on set. So here's a look at product photography from The Laws of Light. So let's get started with lighting products. First, with a quick recap of the ball and the cube. Remember, when you turn a light on a ball, five things happen. You've got a highlight, a specular highlight, a core, a shadow, and a cast shadow. Doesn't matter where this is at or how, where the light is aimed, those five things will always happen if a light turns on. So we're gonna use that to our advantage as we start using products together in this quick product shop. Now for a cube, it's really important that we understand that when you turn a light on, you have a highlight side, you have a shadow side and then you have the top. We want all three of these to have different values. If you want to get a little more information about the ball, the cube, and the cylinder, go to over to our other lessons in the Laws of Light and you'll see exactly how to light each one of these. It'll make this make more sense. So we're going to move now how to light a product shot with the ball, cube, and cylinder as our guide. So here's our product shot. You might think to yourself, well, of course it's a product shot. You chose a ball, a cube, and a cylinder. Everything in life is a ball, a cube, or a cylinder. Sometimes objects are a combination of a ball, a cube, and a cylinder. But let's take a look at our subject here and just see exactly how to light it as a product shot to be able to give us the best separation, the best depth. We've got this two-dimensional experience and we've got to take a three-dimensional world and make it look like it has depth in that two-dimensional experience. So first off, the way I've got my camera here is a little too low. If you look at the image there, I'm barely seeing the top of this Kleenex box. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my camera up. So there we go. Why did I wanna come up a little higher? Well, because I want to see the three distinct sides of this cube here. I don't wanna be down too low so I don't see the top. I wanna to be up high enough to be able to see into all three sides. Now, first off, I've got this cube aiming straight at the camera. It's too much of one. I just gotta decide, okay, do I wanna have less highlight, more shadow, or do I want to have more highlight and less shadow? So I make that determination. In this experience, we have really given us a nice highlight that rolls into a shadow, and it's going to separate the highlight of our cube in the shadow of our cylinder. Now, the cylinder has very reflective surface, so that shadow may not be quite as distinct, but it's definitely there. Now we have our ball in the foreground. The ball in the foreground is doing exactly that. It's going to fall into the shadow on the background. Now here we've got a little cloth that's gonna move around our subject matter. You look at that cloth, we've got a little, a, our Dove soap ad. This is our Dove soap ad. And on there, if I move this Dove soap and I aim it straight towards the camera, there's no logo on that Dove soap. It's completely wiped out, it's completely flat. But if I move it this way and tilt it up towards me, I now get that highlight across the, across the bottom and shadow across the top. I see the logo that's, that's engraved in that bar of soap and it looks really good. So we have highlight to shadow, highlight to shadow, highlight to shadow, and those shadows fall into the highlight of the object behind them, creating separation and depth. And that gives us the best depth. Now I can simply bring in a card and I can decide, okay, how much shadow do I want? I can decide to bring this in. Maybe in the background, in the on the uh, cube here, I'm going, you know what, the top is, is, is fine and I don't want this side to compete with it too much so maybe I'll just let there be a little bit more shadow. Now I get to play with the background because if I look at the background here I can do one of several things with it. If I pull this away from the background the background is going to become much darker and I'm going to have more separation. You can see my subject matter separates from the background a lot more easily. It's darker and I can pull this out a little bit if I want to create a little more depth or I can push this in create just a little more highlight there. Now that, that go the other direction, if I decide, okay, I really want my background to be brighter and I want my subject to be maybe just a little more moody, a little more shadowy, then I can aim this directly at that background and I can give myself a much stronger highlight on that background and it really gives a separation. Highlight side kind of separates to the shadow side in that background and it's a much brighter, much different look. Look at the difference in those two. All right, so, so far I have really been working with a soft light source. A soft light source is a large source because it wraps around. It's also diffused because I've got a cloth in front of it that causes that source to not be quite as hard. But now I'm going to add a harder source to a soft source. 
Sometimes you can mix these two together and it's a very nice look. So if I turn this light on in the back, I'm now gonna add a second light. Now this is gonna give specular highlights on some things in the subject matter here. It's going to give a specular highlights on top of some of these surfaces. And it's a little too much. It throws a huge shadow on the foreground here, but it does some interesting things. It gives us an interesting highlight on the back side of this uh, shape. It gives us an interesting highlight on the cylinder. But I think we just need to take our barn, barn doors here and we just need to control it a little bit so it's not quite so all over everything. Now we've got that secondary source and that it gives us the ability now to go back to our main light and we once again can decide whether we want to play this just more direct light on our objects or a little more moody up front. See there, there's our secondary source back there but if we bring this in, now we have a really bright background a little more shadowy on the foreground, but that hard light highlight is defining some of our objects from behind. So I'm gonna come back to where we're up front here. What if I come way up front here? Just really take this way up front. Now, I'm feeling like I've got a nice dark background. I've got a light. This is still way too squared off. I'm gonna to start to play with this more like this. I've got that secondary source. Look at these great three shapes, uh, uh, colors we have on that. It's just really looking very nice. Now I can add my shadow here. I can add some, I can add a little bit of fill, fill light in there. It's cutting a little bit of my hard light. But this just gives us a little more dimension, it gives us just a little more depth than we did with a single light. We've got that hard light from behind, defines soft light in the front that just kind of wraps. Now another thing we can do with that second light is it really gives us the ability to now start to light the background and the foreground separately. I can take this hard light and I can get it off from my subject matter. I can completely light my background with it. I can say, okay, I'm gonna just separate my background. I'm gonna use it in a manner that will help me to create a little bit. Maybe I put a highlight on this side and let that gradate across to a highlight on the other side. I mean, I can take this off if I want and I can play with just a grid, kind of a soft glow from behind. See how we start getting a soft glow behind there? And it gives us a nice separation across the subject matter right and left. Just gives us a nice glow back there. It doesn't have to be too hard. I mean, if I get up in here a lot harder, I don't think that's just way too much. But if I get just down here just a little bit, see that difference there? Gives us a nice kind of glow back in there. I can put this up on here if I want and just create interest by putting a shaft of light across the background. Try to set that in there somewhere where it's gonna give me some interest on my subject. And the light's now gonna be harder across the background. It starts to create a little, this looks great if you have like a textured wall back there that you can drop out of focus. Just gives you a nice kind of depth in the background with a little bit of heavy light. Uh, one that I love is if I take this just with the warmth of my light, I'm gonna drop this really low. I've got a grid from the side now, which is giving me a really hot spot up here on the right hand side. But now I'm just gonna bring this way, way down. I'm gonna bring this down to where it's just starting to, starting to bloom in there and I'll pull it back a little bit, soften it a little bit and it starts to bloom in from the side just gives me a nice kind of gradation that comes in from the camera right side and moves across and opens up. We see the shadow starting to, to give a separation here. We see the shadow separation here. Now I can bring up my card here and I can decide, okay, where do I want to place that shadow in that world there? How much light do I want? I can get in there. I still have nice separation on that cube because I got a nice highlight, a nice shadow, got a nice round, nice highlight, nice shadow there. So I just moved the light behind our seamless here. This is one of my favorite setups and it's still going to have all the same principles with the ball cube and cylinder, but it's called a top back light. The light is up and behind the subject matter, but it's looking very nice right now. What the top back light does is it gives us a nice, nice separation on the top. It shows the rim of this uh, cylinder here. It shows the top of our ball here. Each one of those shapes is giving us a nice kind of shadow, but all the shadows are not falling now from the right or left, they're falling towards the ground. Our shadow is deeper here, it's falling forward. Now we can paint in and create each one of those surfaces with cards and just give us exactly what we want. I mean, how much do we want on the side? We decide. There are just, I went from dark to a pretty bright. I can decide exactly how much I want on that side. I can now do it on the other side. You know, how much do I want of this on the side here? That's like almost completely blown out and it's just by adding a card in the foreground. I can bring this out, I can diminish it, which means it'll become more directional and give us less, less fill. I can move it out front here, which brings the fill up front, makes it flatter, 
I can bring it back here, which means the fill is a little more uh, shadowy, gives us a little more depth. I can also turn on a secondary light. This light is a hard light. It's gonna give us some hard light on our soap, hard light on our subject matter here. And as we turn that on, that hard light is just, it gives us definition to a lot of the subject matter from this backside. You can also use uh, mirrors, like a small little mirror if I wanna give it a little kick across the uh, soap. Just put a little mirror in here and I can cut a little kick across that soap without any problem. The only thing on here that I'm not loving right now is this little right here. So I would probably try to cut that just a little bit. I would probably bring in a flag or something and get it in here and cut that light off off from that. I would just cut just that little bit with just a little finger and just a piece of foam core that would cut that off from there and not have that weird little shadow on the side of the, of the box. So this is a really a fun, a, an exciting way. Food loves this kind of photography from behind coming forward. There's so many products. This is a great way to shoot products from behind moving forward. It's really the way to light products and to make them look fabulous. So if I wanted to make that background darker, I would have to have a card and I would come in here like this with my card and I simply would cut that background off. Uh, the upper light is really creating that background light there. So all I have to do is flag that off and I can make that background much, much darker. I can tilt it and the light just slowly starts to come in. Right in there, you see it start to come. So there you go, there's a look at a ball cube and a cylinder, how they relate to product photography. Remember, don't be afraid of that 180 degrees behind your subject matter and setting your lights back there because it's a fabulous place to set lights to be able to create interest and depth and really define them, make them look beautiful. It's gonna be a beautiful light. So get out there and try some of these things, try out some products, send them some stuff. Love to see some stuff on our Facebook group. I'd love to see some images that you would send to us so we can talk about just seeing how you use the laws of light to create fabulous product photography. So special shout out to Aperture. We used all those 120D2s to do this shoot today. They are beautiful lights and a great kit that I've got here in an SKB case, which is fabulous. You can see it below here if you want to pick one of those up at our affiliate program, both on BH or on Amazon. So check that out. Also, we have a Studio Strobe download that'll teach you how to do photography and this kind of setup doing strobes. Understand strobes, learn strobes. It makes it so you can rule the world when you can rule, the, rule light, you rule the world, and strobes allow you to do that. It's the easiest way to shoot outside in any lighting situation. It's the difference between a professional and an amateur. So get over to thuslemons.com and the online courses and check out our studio strobe downloads. There's a lot of other great downloads there as well. So you keep those cameras rolling and you keep on clicking. Whoosh, whoosh. No, it's black. There you go. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Keep those cameras rolling and keep on whoosh, clicking.